In this series on managing individual performance, we've worked our way through the differing leadership needs of individuals as they grow and progress in their roles. We've explored how to set goals and provide direction for individuals, as well as how to coach people to improve their skills and to improve their confidence and motivation. Now in this fifth module of the series, it's time to examine the situation where all the leadership and coaching skills we've learned so far no longer seem to apply because the individual we're leading is still not performing satisfactorily. In this case, it's quite possible that performance counselling is the approach we should take to see if we can lead this individual back from the position of underperformance or non-performance. We'll start by discussing the concept of performance counselling and how this differs from coaching. We'll outline the key steps to follow for an effective performance counselling discussion and then go into each of these steps in detail. As we go through them, we'll also briefly revisit the listening and questioning skills that are vital to any effective leadership conversation but are crucially important for a performance counselling discussion. Then we'll finish by talking about how to create the appropriate climate during the counselling session so that your staff member feels supported while still being completely clear about exactly what they need to do to improve their performance. What is performance counselling? A performance counselling conversation outlines an area of a person's performance that needs improvement. The conversation covers why this area of performance needs improvement and sets specific actions to be taken to achieve this. If performance counselling is required, it's usually because the individual concerned has already been given direction, coaching, guidance and mentoring, but still is not performing satisfactorily. In other words, in your eyes, as their leader, you believe that by now they've been given all the information, direction and help they need to do the job, but still they're not performing at the level required, or their performance has dropped from a previously satisfactory level. So performance counselling focuses on the actions that must be taken or the changes that need to occur which are entirely within the control or influence of the person you're counselling. Of course, many employees, and salespeople in particular, do not work under constant daily supervision. So a performance counselling conversation might cover a number of areas including what they do, how much time is spent doing it, what results they get, their standards of performance, and most importantly, what contributions they could be making. The outcomes of performance counselling need to be very specific. Performance improvement plans which are translated into specific actions are more likely to be implemented than plans which are formulated in a general fashion. If the person you're counselling needs to improve in a very specific area, for example, making more proactive phone calls to prospects each week, then you as their leader need to approach them in a way that generates their commitment to do this. How to get commitment to specific actions is the focus of this module. You can learn to be very effective at performance counselling through practice and the application of a few straightforward steps. Here are the seven key steps for effective performance counselling. Number one, describe the counselling issue. This means outlining the performance area or areas that need improvement. It's important to be as specific as possible and also to have evidence of the behaviour being discussed or hard data about the level of performance being discussed. Then, explain why this issue or why the current level of performance is causing problems or difficulties. You'll also need to be very clear about the consequences of non-performance or not addressing this issue for the business and for them personally. The third step is ask for their side of the story. Find out the reason for their present performance and make it clear that you understand their side of the story. This doesn't mean that you have to agree with their side of the story, but simply that you have truly heard and understood what they're saying. Next, ask for their ideas on how to solve the issue or improve their performance. The fifth step is to ask what you can do to help them implement these ideas. And then the sixth step is to agree action steps to put their ideas into practice. These may be mutual actions taken by both you and the individual you're counselling. 
And the seventh and final step is to set a review date and make sure that it is indeed a definite follow-up date.